on cornerofthegalaxy.com. It's time for another episode of Corner of the Galaxy from the Box, the show that gets you behind the scenes of the LA Galaxy and into the minds of soccer reporters and MLS experts. Your hosts for the day are Corner of the Galaxy's Josh Gessman and LA Times soccer reporter Kevin Baxter. Let's start the show. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Corner of the Galaxy from the box on cornerofthegalaxy.com. I'm your host, Josh Gessman, coming to you on Monday, August 2nd. The LA Galaxy uh, coming off a 4-1 win on Port- over Portland. If you were at our live show, you already know we talked. Our live show's up there for you to be listening to as well so you can catch some of that talk to Dennis Sposa, Kevin Hartman we're gonna just recap some stuff that we talked about on that get you ready for a midweek game against Real Salt Lake game on Wednesday game on Sunday a bunch of home games coming up for the LA Galaxy super important that they do well here we're gonna talk about that as we go team of the week gold cup all sorts of fun stuff that's sort of mixed in there uh, a lot to get to I'm gonna tell you right now no panda today and that's okay the man we have helping us out was uh, actually one of my favorite people at the live show. Uh, his trivia was excellent, outstanding, fun, uh, and made everybody almost want to kill each other on a couple occasions. Uh, is Larry Morgan not on Twitter? Larry, how you doing, buddy? Good, Josh. Good. Are, 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 Good. Are, is that are you dabbing? Is that is that what you're doing? <laughs> please don't, don't please doing. please don't do that. I won't. I won't. Yeah, um, was, you, but you'll have to give him some tips on how to do my best Kevin Baxter presentation. I can like freeze, maybe, right? Like, 20 seconds, something like that, you know? Right. So I guess that's the best I can do. Wow, you're going after Kevin's uh, software, right? That's that's, that's hitting right. the man where it really hurts, and I, I appreciate right. it. No, Kevin uh, Kevin uh, just called me uh, from Tokyo. He was on assignment. He was headed somewhere. I think he had to take a two-hour bus ride to go watch a soccer game, and then a two-hour bus ride to come back, and he was complaining, and I'm sure, you know, the 7-Eleven wasn't open or something like that. I don't know. Uh, it was He was he was in a mood, but uh, he did give me some, some cool stuff. So I have some stuff. Uh, that I can talk to you guys a little bit about and, and sort of get you uh, get you going there. But um, Larry, what did you think of the live show? Let's go back. I mean, let's let's talk about the live show a little bit. I thought it was. I thought everybody had a, a, a great time. Uh, my trivia questions did stump a few of the people, especially the Clint Mathis one. I, I still think that Clint was back there answering that question, so he cheated a little <laughs> bit. But uh, you know, but the one question I didn't get to ask me, and, and I thought of, was you know the Galaxy had a crowd of more than sixty nine thousand. At their first ever game, name them. That would have stumped everybody. <laughs> I, I I do know at least one. Um, and Eric. Eric was at that game, so I always yeah. say that Eric is the is the answer to that question. But yeah, no, no that would have stumped everybody. You're right. You're right. I thought the, I thought it was fantastic. Everybody had a great time. I was in a good mood. Uh, it was I fun. enjoyed it very very much. Dennis Teclosa came and talked to us for a little while. Yep. I mean, you don't get that every every day, right? You get to sit down and, and let the talk to the LA Galaxy general manager. We talked to him um, about uh, Jovalich, who I have an update on today. Uh, Dennis gave, you know, I at the time, I didn't quite understand his answer, Larry. And it was, it's whenever you're doing the live show and things are ticking by fast and you're trying to coordinate the show and everything going on. He said, wasn't there a coach in Orlando who announced a player before they had signed him? And he goes, that's not going to be me. If you read between the lines of that, which is a great answer, by the way. If you yeah. read between the lines of that, he's saying the player's coming. I'm not going to announce him before he gets here, right? I mean, sure. that's that's the way to read that. And sure. plus, with all the reports that we've talked about, all the things that we have you know, sort of gone through, um, we know where Jovalich is. So we'll give you an update on that. But I just thought, I thought, um, I thought Kevin, I thought uh, Dennis was great. And then Kevin Hartman, Kevin Hartman, so much fun. Uh, not only did Kevin sit there and answer some questions, we had some fun with him and, and sort of, you know, just harassed him for a little bit. That was fun. 
um, you know, gave some real good insight into Jonathan Bond and the goalkeepers and just what the coaching staff is trying to do with this team and just like a whole bunch of fun things like that, right? And so you sit there and go, you know, that's that's really cool to be able to do that. But then Kevin Hartman stayed until like 9.30. So we started the live show at 5.30. Um, Dennis was on pretty much up at the front. Uh, I was there since 3.00. Uh, yeah, what? Yes, Larry? You know, I was going to say, uh, I was talking to Kevin Hartman inside the bar, in, inside the uh, TAPS building, and we were talking about the Galaxy, duh. Yep. And, uh, and he said, he said he listens to your show all the time. And in fact, he told me, thanks to the COG podcast, he was able to get through the pandemic. Now, how about that? So we, we helped Kevin, I mean, can we help Kevin Hartman? Uh, the best was, I think his daughter came up. Uh, after the show and after it was a little late and, and she handed me $20 and he goes, he goes, this is for a super chat. So Kevin Hartman was giving me a live super chat at the live show. It was, it was, it was really fun. So Kevin was great. Um, hung around for a little while. You know, Mike Rajo, LA Galaxy PA announcer who does our announcements here on the show was there. He hung out for a while. I mean, so many great fans from our discord. I mean, we had over a hundred people there, which is more than I ever expected. Um, it was great. Uh, we were able to do a whole bunch of things. We did some trivia. We gave away all the rest of the scarves that we had. Uh, you know, Mike Gray was there. Delney was there. Jamie Bacon was there. Chris Tucker was there. I mean, there's a whole bunch of people who I have uh, basically grown up with. Uh, but there was one notable absence. Yeah. Yeah. Who's that? Sophie. Sophie. Yes. Yeah, Sophie was not there. I yeah. and and she was under the weather. She's not feeling well, but she's getting better. But she was quote, bummed out. She couldn't be there. She was very bummed out. And two things. One is we have told the Trader Joe's story on this podcast. And the Trader Joe's story is that Sophie went into a Trader Joe's. Uh, she was wearing her Arsenal jersey. Somebody said, oh, hey, I'm an Arsenal fan, um, blah, 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 the whole deal. And uh, they get to know each other. And then he listens to her on the he listens to her podcast about Arsenal that she has, right? The Highbury Squad, I, I believe is what it's called, right? Yes. And so then she goes back in another time and... And this person goes, oh, my God, you record with Guessman? You're on Corner of the Galaxy, right? And this person also was a big Galaxy fan. And so the best part was, and this is why I'm sad Sophie wasn't there, really sad, is because David, who who was the guy at Trader Joe's who works there, he came up to me and said hi there, and we took a picture together. It was great. I got to meet David. Uh, he had the cutest, I think, six-month-old corgi and all that stuff. It was just, it was great. I And I missed, I missed Sophie because of that. Yeah. You know, speaking of a recognition story, I might have told you this, I can't remember, but I was walking out of the stadium following the uh, Galaxy's win over Portland, walking up to my car, and there was a guy sitting in his car parked close to mine. And so I'm about to get in my car, and I hear this, Larry Morgan, not on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. <laughs> he, said, he said he was on his way to the uh, U.S.-Mexico match in Las Vegas. That's so awesome. I, I said hi to him, talk to him. Um, that's back to a few minutes. That's awesome. No, the the live show was great. Um, I had listeners bring me cupcakes. I had uh two two my very favorite listeners brought me a whole case of Dr Pepper, so you uh, which put is on a few pounds. Which I'm drinking. Which I'm drinking right there now. Yes, there yes. I'm, I'm putting on the pounds right now right. as we speak. I'm I'm I, they've got me hooked back on the on the Dr Pepper. So uh, doing that. But anyway, uh, first of all, I didn't. I, I messed up in the live show and I didn't get to say. Thank you to Sophie for all the time that she puts into this as well. And she brings such a unique perspective to all this. And um, she does a great job. And and she has that sexy British accent too that I always enjoy. So I mean, just hanging out with Sophie is like And being, one thing she has being, to she she has to be lauded. She always seems to wear a different hat. Yeah, she does. I've she's never seen her wear the same hat. No, the thing that Sophie gets lauded for is whenever she's able to ask questions that connect with coaches and players. We, you and I, Larry, would never ask the questions that Sophie asks, and that's good. I'm glad that we get True. a different perspective. Sophie's able to draw down and get like the raw emotion. And so Sophie's amazing. I love you, Sophie. Yeah. Hopefully you're feeling better. Maybe we'll even get you on the show this Thursday if you're feeling up to it. I will I will text you. Get well, but, Sophie. Anyway. Get well. That's where we're at. Don't okay. think so much about Arsenal. That'll help. <laughs> yeah, that'll make you feel better. Yeah, maybe switch Premier League teams. That might make you feel better. Um, let's get a little bit to this Portland Timbers game. I know we've gone over it. I know it was Friday, and it seems like it was like a year ago, uh, but it was just a couple days ago. Uh, I just want to touch on some some high level sort of stuff that we you know really want to talk about. One is um, if you've seen any of the behind the scenes video that the LA Galaxy put out today and sort of was, was talking about. Uh, there was a real emphasis by Greg Vanny and uh, by the rest of the team uh, to 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 honor and to stand up for Jonathan Dos Santos. Jonathan Dos Santos, his father passed away, Zazino. We know that um, it's it's one of those things that that you would think this young team, the way that it is set up, would not necessarily be. And I say young in terms of its development as a, a unit. Right. There's young players, there's old players, but they haven't been together for very long. 
Um, you would think, Larry, with the development of this unit that you've seen, that there wouldn't be this like, oh, well, you know, that's family. That's a family thing. This seems like a team that has been together for five or six years, not one that's been together for, what, five or six months at this point, you know? Well, I know that, that we're going to talk about it more as the show goes on, but Jonathan Bond alluded to the fact that this is the one of the best locker rooms he's ever been in. No egos, and there's a strong bond with the I, players. I know he said that. I yeah, almost, he, I almost he said laughed. That. I yes. almost laughed, but yeah. I didn't have the guts to do it. But he alluded you know, to the fact that this is a very close team, so it didn't surprise me that there was that tribute to Jonah and his father during the game. It was very touching, very, very nice to see. Yeah, well, and then they all wore black armbands, but they showed yeah. Vanny sort of gave a before the game speech, right, Larry? And so he was, had everybody in a circle in the locker room, and they all had their arms around each other, and they were they were talking. And Greg Vanny goes, you know, we had a teammate who's not here with us right now whose dad passed away. He goes, and that means there's a loss in this family. And so, I, you know, I, I sort of, and I'm paraphrasing, you can go watch the actual video, but he's, he, goes, he goes, you know, you need to show up for Jonathan. You need to show him that even though he's not here, that we have his back and that we need to fight for him. And it's, I mean, you know, you hear a lot of like these raw, raw speeches in, in, in uh, movies and stuff like that. You know, I don't know. Anytime I watch the movie, Rudy, I yeah, win one for the Gipper, win one for the Gipper. Like there's just stuff that has been like built up and done all this stuff. And you sit there and then yeah. to watch Greg Vanny, who is a man of many words when he wants to be. And in this case, I think he chose to pare down his words. He got the message across. He goes, if that doesn't get your heart going, if that doesn't get you guys wanting to go out there and play, he goes, then I don't know what to tell you basically. Yeah. I think the word that best describes it, this guy's genuine. He really is. I mean, there's nothing false about what this guy says or what this guy tries to do. He's genuine. He really, he cares about the team since, my gosh, he was a original member of the Galaxy in 1996, and he just, he'll do anything he can for this team, and, and it's so it's so nice to see. I mean, he, he takes great pride in this team and in his players, and I think it's, I think it reflects in the, uh, in the way the team plays on, on the field, for the most part. For, for the most part. For the most part. You know, there, there's a lot of stuff. We're going to get into that media call yeah, and sort of how it sure. goes. Uh, by the way, Mike Gray, Mike Gray gave us a $5 super chat, says, thanks for hosting a great event, Josh. Also, I'm appearing on the MLS Power Ranking Show tomorrow, so wish me luck. Oh, you're on that Twitter Spaces thing. They're going to ask you stuff that just has nothing. To, just tell Mike to, to pull his hair back, because when it doesn't, it's like out there. No, he, it's just audio. It's okay. Um, okay I, yeah. I, I I know how it is. But no, Mike, you know, one of the things that, that I think, and certainly whenever I was on, I felt this way is that they want to talk about things that are like, oh, wow, the galaxy. Let's talk about the individual pieces and not about the team that is going out there and beating people. Um, all the other teams seem to be talking about how good the team is playing and stuff like that. And I think the galaxy gets shortchanged on that right now because people like to say, oh, well, you know, they don't believe where the galaxy are. They don't believe they should be in third place in the Western Conference, right? So they overlook that and just want to talk about the individual pieces. But when we look at the LA Galaxy, we see a team out there and we see a team more than anything we've seen over the last four or five years. So that's the biggest no development, not the individual yes. pieces. And certainly you can talk about Ravellison and how crazy good he has been in a short amount of time. You could talk about Kevin Cabral as he struggled, but has a lot of potential. You can talk about, you know, uh, Chicharito and how quickly he started and, not, and missing him. There's individual things there. But the bottom line is that through absences, through missing the league's leading scorer, uh, uh, through the entire month of July, didn't play a single game in the month of July. Uh, the Galaxy still stayed where they where they were, Larry. They're in third place. They started in third place. They stayed there. Yeah, just think about how just think about the players who who have been out. Like Chicharito hasn't played since late June. Uh, Jonah and Sebastian have been out for a month. They missed one of their best defenders, Derek Williams, over six game suspension. Uh, Dan Steris has been out. Yep. Sega Koulibaly has been out. Yep. And and just think of all these absences and how they've managed to persevere. It's it's very impressive. I mean, I think uh, I don't know who's been saying the team is a work in progress, and I, th I think think it is. But when this team gets back 100 percent whole, it could be pretty scary. It could it's be going to be fun to see, and and it's a fun to cover this team for a change. <laughs> the I was going to say years have been kind of lean. Oh yeah. <laughs> you you hit the nail on the head, Larry. We talked yeah. about it at the live show that like we get to watch good soccer again, and that's yes. that's something that's different and fun and a yes. whole bunch of stuff. Uh, by the way, uh, we got another uh, uh, super chat from Ben. Ben gave us a five dollars super chat, Larry, and he goes, "This is for Larry's research team. He's giving five dollars for your research team." Here he goes. Are you ready? Galaxy finished Friday's game with nine first year G's on the field. Besides nineteen ninety six, have they ever fielded more new players? 
Wow. Ooh, that's a research that's question. A, that's a really good question. That would take you that would take see. me a long time. Yeah, you're gonna be you're gonna be out there. I don't that, know if that's a whole research, day. I don't know if my research staff wants to do that. I'm not sure. <laughs> Your research staff has other things to do. I'm <laughs> yeah. sure that's a uh, That's a really good question. It's a really yeah. good question. No, no, it, it's super interesting. Anyway, yeah. back to Portland. Um Thank you, Ben. Yeah, th- thank you, Ben. We appreciate that. Thank you, Mike, as well. Um, you can always super chat during the show, and we'll read your comment as long as it's socially appropriate. Um, I How always have to. Is it not? Uh, well, every once in a while, we did have we did have one once. So okay. I still t- I kept the money. By the way, it's not like I'm going <laughs> to give you back your money. Um, Good for you. So, yeah, absolutely. Uh, so the LA Galaxy. I mean, we've talked about this, and this was sort of at the live show as well. And so if you listened to that or you were there, it's a little bit of a repeat. But you know, the LA Galaxy didn't start well. Um, but the import, yeah, yeah, I was going to say that's like an understatement, right? Larry, even, even Greg Vanny was like, yeah, we know, right? Sasha Kleshman was like, we started horribly. You know, it was one of those. I, I, it was, uh, like I said at the, uh, at the live show, it was like Jamaica and the U S and the gold cup games. Jamaica was all over the Americans for about 20 minutes. Yep. And then they settled down and they managed to, to win. Yeah. Yeah. But that was ugly. That was really ugly. And if not for Jonathan Bond, they would have been down to at least two goals. Yeah, what would have been for sure. Um, and so you look at this at this lineup. It had Victor Vasquez in it, Ethan Zubak up top, uh, you know, Kevin Cabral, Ryan Revelison, Sasha Kleshin, Sam Grancier, uh, Viafania, Williams, Depew, and Araujo. I thought it was interesting Depew started and not Steris. Um, you have to wonder yeah. if perhaps his recovery coming back and there was uh, there was something there, Larry, that, uh, you know, he pulled up with some cramps at the end of the last game before this this uh, the Portland game. And so maybe there was more. Vanny says everybody's good in terms of that. I'll tell you who isn't. And we'll get to un- injury updates here in a second. Um, you know, so, uh, uh, speaking of, of Zubak. The live show audience didn't show that young man much love. <laughs> we we played a form of Galaxy Survivor, so if you want to uh, if if that you want to do that, uh, that's that's towards the end of the show. It's a fun one, and Larry's trivia gets pretty crazy in there too. So uh, that's yeah. a that's a good segment there in the in the latter half of the show that you want to watch. But um, you know this is a this is a team that didn't start well, and I, I think the biggest takeaway that you can take from this is that they built into a game, and so often we've seen yes. this Galaxy team fade. Right, we've seen them run away. Um, you know, in the second half. So we've seen the LA Galaxy play some excellent first half soccer this year. We've seen them play some very mediocre second half soccer, right? And in this game, that was not what they did. They built into this game. So outside of the first 20 minutes, the rest of that performance was actually pretty solid. So 70 minutes it of was. good soccer, it's actually one of their most complete games they've played. Um, and, and having said all that... I like get, Victor Vasquez a lot in this game after after the opening portion of the game. Yeah. I like um, him a lot. And that header was a thing of beauty. Yeah. across from Araujo. I liked him a lot, Vasquez. Julian Araujo. Um, you know, can, it was... Can we say enough good things about this guy? No. Ju- no, you can't. And, and Julian Araujo continues to impress. Um, you know, you can say all the nice... He, I think he leads the team in, in, in uh, assists now, right? With six? Six, six. Yeah, so he has six assists now. Um, and that's he's 19 years old, Josh. He's, he looks like is, a man. Is he, of, he is looks he 20 like a now? Isn't he, isn't he 20 now? He turns 20 in a couple weeks. Okay, so he's almost 20. Okay. Yeah. That's good. I mean, uh, he's playing like a man. He's keeping his emotions under control, which, as we know, was a problem for him the last couple of years. Uh, just he'll he'll be in Europe before the end of the year. He'll he will be in Europe. Yeah, I think so. I think I think he's going to go. Um, I hope he doesn't go, but I have a feeling he he will be going. We'll see. Maybe the Galaxy hold on to him for a year longer than they should. You never That'd know. That'd be nice. That'd be I, nice. You never know. Um, so anyway, so, so the, you know, this Portland game really is all about just how the Galaxy built into it. It's about the four different goal scores. It's about getting Sam Grancier on the board, which was a huge, you know, sort of relief. And you saw everybody celebrating with him. Um, it's about Kevin Cabral and how well he played in this game because we have to look at progress. And the progress he made in this game was substantial. He was playing with confidence. He was taking people one-on-one. He wasn't doing the thing where Greg Vanny criticizes him of of thinking too quickly and sometimes screwing some things up. But I know everybody's going to go back and go back to the sitter that he missed uh, that would have given the LA Galaxy, I think, their fourth goal um, at the time. And it it eventually could have had five goals um, in all those. I know everybody wants to go back to that, but look at everything outside of that. And there was a real step and progression forward that is only going to help the LA Galaxy going into this Real Salt Lake game. Yeah, I just hope the frustration doesn't get the best of them. I mean, we've seen it happen with a lot of athletes. Um, You know, I'm a patient guy, so I'll give him a break for now. But, uh, you know, I think he'll be fine. We, you're gonna you're gonna give him a ba- uh, a a break for now. I mean, the guy has a five year contract. Everybody's giving him a break from now. Okay. How long they, is your contract? Uh, forever. It's forever. it's infinity okay. that you're never getting rid of me. Um, 
yeah, it was. It, it's one of those things where you look at Cabral will be fine, and I, I really believe that it, it, you're going to get two or three really good years out of him. And I, I think once he scores, he's going to score a lot. I mean, he has scored, right? He got one goal. He has one. I mean, once he scores yes. again, yes. he's going he, to score a lot. You want to get him into that that rhythm. And that's really what you know you were hoping you would develop within this. Um, Sasha Kleshin getting a penalty kick goal was, was great as well. Victor Vasquez scoring a goal. Uh, Ryan Revelison with his overhead bicycle kick. Good oh, Lord. Come on. The goal of the year. The goal of the year. Come right on. Oh, by the way, go vote for that um, if you want him to win goal of the week, as it should win. Uh, I think oh, it was named the number no two question. play on the ESPN top 10. It should have yeah. been number one. The number one was an overhead barehanded catch it wasn't that hard i've done that and <laughs> i i was a much better baseball player than i was a soccer player okay so i have made that exact play many times okay so that's one it shouldn't have been a top 10 good position tight get tight spot in the game but ryan revelison's uh, bicycle kick was was outstanding well, um, and plus the fact that he that he did this kick in traffic makes it even more impressive lots of people around him um that increases the difficulty because you can get fouls in there and a whole bunch of other things. So yeah, it's it's one of those things. So, I mean, Revelison has been great. Let's get to just some of the stats that we sort of look at whenever we uh, look at these things, and we'll always go to my favorite chart, which is, of uh, course, the passing chart. High school um, geometry, I do not want to look at that. I do not want to look at that. <laughs> you don't have to. You keep your eyes uh, closed. Oh, uh, that's terrible. I that like brings this. back nightmares about that class in high school. These are all triangles. How difficult were triangles? Triangles were the they easy were part of geometry. They, they were hard for me. All this isosceles junk was no, hard for me. No, is it, all the angles equal 180 degrees? Come on. This is <laughs> this is not that difficult. Anyway, um, the, the diamond shape is nice. There's actually real definition in here. The only thing that I think if you're looking at this passing chart and you sort of want to say what stands out to you, uh, it's the fact that Ethan Zubak was a little bit more withdrawn than you probably would have seen. So these are average positions as well. Uh, I love the passing along the back line whenever you go between uh, guys like Derek Williams and Nick Depew and making sure you get Julian Araujo, whose average position was at in the midfield line. You have Viafania, who is a little more recessed, probably because Julian Araujo was getting so far forward, so you switch around and rotate around. You should see that, in my opinion. Whenever I see this, if you're going to have a dominant side like the LA Galaxy have with Grand Sear and with Araujo on the same side or with Cabral, um, you know, up front and with uh, with Araujo on, on the right side, then you want to see that backside of that rotation, I think, just rotate just a little bit counter to where your forward progress is. So if Araujo and Cabral are going to be the forward push on the right-hand side, then you want to see that left-hand side just tweak back just a little bit. And if you look at it, Viafania's position has just moved about a hair back from where Araujo's average position. So it shows me he was staying back just a little bit more in order to cover Araujo. So, um, hey, Josh. Some, yeah. If he colored in all those spaces, I wonder what that thing would look like. It would look like a bunch of triangles. Come on. Okay. It's, it's just triangles. That's all. It's okay. just triangles. All right. I'm um, just kind, just kind of curious. And there's wait, the poor man's etch sketch. There do you, it is. Do you think it's a Rorschach test or something? You think you're, <laughs> you know you're going to see like candy bars or something like? I don't know. Bats. I don't, bats. Yeah, okay, bats. That's what it is. Um, and if we looked at expected goals, LA Galaxy won the expected goals. Got uh, obviously uh, with a three. Uh, three expected goals to Portland's 1.2 uh, shots, 19 to 12 shots on target, six to four LA galaxy leading all that. Um, that was a lot of shots in that game for the LA it galaxy. Was. There was a lot of pressure uh, from, from the LA galaxy in that game as well. So um, for me, Larry, looking at everything, I think you take a lot of positives. One of the negatives is that Victor Vasquez did come out of this game at halftime. There was some uh, issue with a hamstring tightness, it looked like. Um, and so we'll talk about that media call here in a second. We'll give you updates on everybody. I don't want to just jump into that. Yes, anything else, Larry, you want to wrap I'll, up I'll Portland? Say about Victor Vasquez, I think they're going to take a very cautious approach with him, considering he's, what, 33, 34 years old. They're going to think they're going to be very careful with him. They realize the importance he has on that team. He's been a real rock out there when he's been out there. Personally, I don't think he's going to play Wednesday. I think he's going to play the weekend match. But again, with a guy like Victor, play it safe. Play yeah. it safe with this guy. I, yeah, I mean, it's the same as Chicharito, and we'll talk yes. about that here in a little yes. bit. Yes. Uh, team of the week uh, ends up coming out. Julian Araujo gets named to the team of the week. He had two assists on that right side. Uh, MLS he's decides. The M MLS decides to go uh, three in the back this time. Their team of the week always changes. It drives me crazy. They everything <laughs> everything they do drives me crazy. Let's be well, very like honest. Like Bruce says, formation means nothing. Form yeah, sure. Well, especially not on the team of the week. Those guys don't play together. Nobody That's cares. Right. Uh, Ryan right. Revelison made the bench for uh, the team of the week as well, um, which is kind of stupid. I'll be honest. He was like the second best, the, the third best player on the field probably that night. I thought Sam Grancier was outstanding I do uh, too. on the night as well and and just really dynamic. He reminds me so much of Ramon Alessandrini. So much. 
there, I mean, you know, you can take the French thing and throw that out. I don't even need that to make the comparison. I would compare him to Roman Allison Journey anyway, just the way yeah, he I likes. Yeah, I think the only difference is old Grand Sur isn't left footed like Roman was. No, but there's still that inversion, right? R- sure. Roman Allison was very much an inverted winger, so he liked to cut in. You have Sam Grand Sur playing that inverted winger side, being able to come in or staying wide. I love him cutting in, and, you know, Greg Vanny talked about him holding the ball a little bit longer, right? So coming in and not taking that shot as soon as he comes in on that on the left hand side, if he's playing on the left, but coming inside and then looking to take the shot and then not, and then moving to the next sort of space where there should be space and then not taking the shot and put, passing the ball off, laying that off. I'll tell you, on more than one occasion, we saw Grant Sierra show some pretty fancy footwork, too, some pretty fancy dribbling skills. I uh, yeah. hadn't seen that before, not that much. He was very impressive with, with the ball, and you have to love his speed. Oh, boy. Yeah. You know, he's. I compare him a lot to Emma Boateng, who was one of the few athletes I've seen who made running fast look so easy. I think Grant Sierra is in that company. Yeah, I was watching a, a a friend's podcast and they had AJ Delagars on there and uh, and they they asked they were like, um, so uh, so are, who's faster, you or Emma Boateng? And AJ Delagars was like, it's not even close. He goes, I can beat I can beat Emma Boateng running backwards. He goes, I'm way faster than he is. So there you go. <laughs> so AJ, uh, I'd like to see that. Yeah, yep, yeah, absolutely. So um, it, it was it was sort of fun. Um, but no, I, I remember mean, when uh, when uh, Todd Dunlop was on the team when he was retiring, and I asked him who's the fastest player. He's, he's ever played with him. He said, Ugo Emelu was the fastest player he's ever seen on the Galaxy. Yep. Yep. I can see that. I can yep. see that. Um, yeah, there's, I mean, you know, I don't even think Grant Sir is that fast. I think he's very quick, and I, I like think quickness. He's fast. I think he's maybe, fast. Maybe he is. Uh, yeah. Kevin Cabral sat Blake bodily down um, on the ground. That you know, that man probably has a uh, you know a wife and children somewhere, and there was a murder on the field with with Cabral setting him down. And then he almost had the cross. It actually was yeah. a good place cross. It just needed somebody there on the back post to sort of finish yeah. it. It was just a little early, um, but that was fun to watch. So anyway, Portland game was great. I really enjoyed that. Uh, that was fun. If you're looking at what happens next after that, you get the Gold Cup played on Sunday, which was fun for LA Galaxy fans because you had Efrain Alvarez and Jonathan Dos Santos uh, who got to play on the Mexico side, and you had Sebastian Legette, uh who played and started on the uh, on the U.S. side. Um, really interesting game. I thought Legette had a quiet game um, for him. I thought Jonathan Dos Santos didn't necessarily have a standout game, but if you look at that game, it was a jumbled mess at times. And I think it was a little frantic. Um, and so I don't expect that there were, you know, any great standouts. You could look at uh, Kellen Acosta for the U.S. had an excellent game. He was one of How those about guys. Matt Turner? Matt Turner, goal. goalkeeper, wow. was, was really good. I mean, you know, uh, I, I heard that Matt Turner had to make a bunch of saves in the first half and didn't make a single save in the second half. I, I, I find that amazing. Anyway, uh, so Seb- the, here's the good part if you're an LA Galaxy fan, Larry. All those guys made it through without any injuries as far as we know, um, and they have all been released back to the L.A. Galaxy. Um, if you were at our live show, then you know Dennis DeClosa talked to Jonathan Dos Santos, and Jonathan Dos Santos basically said that he wanted to get back to the Galaxy as quickly as possible. Um, I think that there's probably going to be an understanding that that still may mean he's going to take a couple days to to gather some things. And as of right now, um, we got a, a tweet that just before we started the show, Larry, that uh, Jonathan Dos Santos is in Mexico City with the Mexican national team uh, who's home there right now. And so we'll see where he goes and how he ends up and whether or not he will be back. But Greg Vanny was actually uh, a little optimistic that perhaps those guys would come back and that they would be able to talk about, you know, possibly being included in, in the game on Wednesday. Well, I was going to add about that Gold Cup match, about the scene at the end of the game where they had Sebastian and Jonah embracing yeah, uh, you know, very, very touching. Yeah, I was I was chopping onions at the time, so there was some. <laughs> it's like a dust. Oh, truck. that's what it was. Yeah, okay. there was. There, I think there was a dust truck that drove by, and it got a little in my eyes and stuff yeah. like that. Um, I, I, I'll uh, let me see if I can dive into this because I've been talking to a bunch of people, and I think I tried to say it on Thursday, and I think I tried to say it at the live show as well. And I don't think I'm doing a good job of any of that, and uh, I'll try to say it again. This team is different than some of the teams you've watched. Um, there's there's a loss felt across everybody in this. Yeah. Uh, you know, Sebastian Legette and Jonathan Dos Santos um, have known each other for a long time. Uh, and you can bet that Sebastian Legette knew who Zazinho was. Um, because most of the people who've been around the locker room know that. Uh, so uh, when you see that, you know, play like brothers. And it's been said over and over again this year. And it sounds cliche. It sounds kitschy. It sounds like, oh, this is this is cute. It's real. Um, yes, so, but sometimes cliches work, and in this case, I think it does. Yeah, it was it was um, 
you know, even though I hate cliches, sometimes yeah, it, 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 it works. And these guys believe it. And you saw Sebastian and Jonathan Dos Santos hugging at the end of that game. And, you know, it just it again, it's a game. You play it and those guys battled out there and they battled against each other and they played against each other. And then afterwards, those guys are teammates and they got to hug probably for the first time since it all happened because they were in different camps and all that stuff and it was over. Uh, and so, you know, then that's really Jonathan Dos Santos had a little bit of a distraction playing in some of these games. Um, and now he has to sort of be faced with that reality. And we'll see what happens when he has just a little bit of time off in between here. Um, so, yeah, it was it was super touching and um you know, just a, a poignant moment. I don't. I know that I will never forget that seeing those yeah. guys hung in on the field. I was up here editing the live show so I could put it out while it was going I on. I thought you I, were chopping onions. Yeah, that too. And okay. you know, what, however, however we said it. But no, it was it was really interesting uh, moment and and certainly a, a, an emotional one. I know a lot of people. I posted that video on on Instagram. And people were like, you know, that was a good one. So yeah, um, yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be really interesting to see. So um, yeah, so that's the gold cup. Those guys come back. Uh, I guess we should get to the media call. Let's get to it because then we can start talking about injuries and everything else. Uh, Lots the, of good stuff on the call today. Lots. It was right. It was. I, I I'd think. Greg, have a, as I told you, I'd rather have a lot to write about than not enough to write about. Let's go. Let's see who had the first question today, Larry. Because there were people missing. Who had the first I, question today? I believe it was somebody named Josh Gessman. That was me. I had first questions today. Woohoo! Yep, Lucky me. Yep, yep. Stay it there long enough. It was a good question, but it was the first one. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Larry. I just <laughs> I just need to get my housekeeping. All right. That was, I need housekeeping no. questions. What was it? The uh, boilerplate. Yes. The boilerplate question, right? Yeah. That's, it is. Yeah. It's just, it's stuff we have I to go it. through. I liked it. Um, get that stuff out of the way. Yeah. You, we have to know about injuries. You and you, you and I were talking beforehand. You remember when we dealt with Bruce or with a lot of other guys, they never want to talk about injuries, right? They hated to. They, Bruce hated to talk about injuries. I mean, you had to practically pull teeth to have him talk about somebody who's hurt. And Greg Vanny is just the opposite. He doesn't mind it, which is, which is such it's a not, breath of fresh air. Yeah, because you can just ask. So I asked, yeah. Um, yeah. asked Greg to give us an update on the um, on the injuries to Chicharito, to Victor Vasquez, uh, and then to tell us about the international players that were coming out or coming back and sort of what he thought their availability was. So let's just let Greg tell you instead of me, so that way you know I can just drink more Dr Pepper over here. Here's Greg Vanny uh, talking at the media call today. Just don't burp. Yeah, Javier will be uh, questionable, and Victor questionable too. Victor had a a minor issue that was kind of IT band ish. Uh, I don't know if it was IT band or somewhere hamstring IT band, very very minor. So it's going to be he's kind of day to day. We'll see how he responds uh, tomorrow. We'll give him a little bit of a uh, a little bit to do tomorrow and see how he feels and how he's responding on that. Uh, Javier, same thing. It's just a, it's a return to play and how much he's, he's, uh, he's progressing. It's, you know, he's probably a little more doubtful, I would say, just because again, it's about how, how much we can accomplish on the field as we, as we move forward. Um, yeah, everybody else is good. The guys, uh, are returning today. Uh, so we'll kind of take inventory on them, you know, between today and tomorrow. Um, and, you know, see what kind of role that they can play going into into Wednesday. Uh, so there we go, little little Greg. By Manny, the way, we'll, if, we'll, if we'll, anybody is interested what to know what an IT band is, it's a strip of connective tissue yes. that helps the hip rotate. Uh, I thought it was a, a bunch of uh, computer nerds who played some instruments, or or some punk band or something. No, it was IT band. That's a great joke. That is a great joke, and it, and Larry, nothing. I got nothing from you over there. Yeah, nothing I don't, from me. I, I don't I don't know what I need to do in order to get like something that was an IT band get it because in IT like if you're in IT and then okay. no I okay. I don't I don't feel like I don't feel like I get it now Josh I'm gonna I'm gonna freeze like Kevin just yeah yeah, yeah is that <laughs> I just one of these days one of these days I will get. There we go. I was looking for it. Um, I like it. That's like that's it. my joke. Um, but yeah, so that's that's sort of where we sit there. Um. You know, the IT band injury. Then Chicharito, I thought that was interesting. He's questionable. He's probably more doubtful. Uh, so yes. if you followed that progression during that, play. so he he's play. not going to play. Uh, I don't know about Victor Vasquez. I don't think they're going to play him. And I feel that way because I feel like they want to see what happens tomorrow, but they're pretty sure they're not going to play him, right? Yeah. Like I said earlier, they're going to they're going to be very careful with this guy. They know how important he is to this team. I don't expect him to play. Okay. Now, the weekend match, I think he will return. Okay, so but here's the deal, right? We've been asking about Chicharito now for the entire month of July, ever since he got scratched before the SKC game, right? And 
we have we were always told it was precautionary, right? It was a precautionary scratch at some point. And then we were told maybe it was a little more than that. And there was some scar tissue on the old injury. And so that sort of flared up. And that's the problem, the whole deal. But I sort of wanted to drill down on Greg for, for all this because, you know, we say he says return to play, return to play. Like he keeps we keep expecting him to be available. Right. And he's still not available. And so I asked, I go, was there a setback? Is this a new injury? Is this an old injury? Where are we on that? And so Greg uh, answered that as well. And I want to let him say it instead of uh, instead of me. So here's Greg Vanny. Yeah, we, we had a, you know, a follow up again as we took some steps forward with him. We had a follow up. Uh, we started to see what they would say, a little bit of an edema coming back into the area as he started to go. So we just we shut him down for a couple more days, and then he'll start that process again, which he's he's undergoing. So um, there was a there was I guess you would call that a setback. There was a pause in the kind of the return to to action, uh, if you will. Um, so we just we're kind of recalibrating now and moving forward. But he's starting to starting to do some of that work again that he was doing before. We'll just have to see if we can keep keep pressing on. All right. And again, and again, if anybody is interested, an edema is a buildup of fluid in uh, some bodily tissues or cavities. So, I'm, aren't, I'm, I, aren't, aren't I intelligent tonight? I mean, I mean, ask? you got the Google machine out That's in front true. of you. So, That's I mean, true. I mean, I would just say thank you, Google. But at the same time. I don't want to talk about any edemas either. So, um, yeah, that's that's one of those things that we sort of look there. Um, now, being yes. a veteran of these of this injury news for however long I was in this, I have a habit in, in this business. When you have an athlete who's out this this long, your immediate reaction is it's much more serious than they're letting on. Right. Uh, it's not a strain calf. I wouldn't be surprised if there was a tear in there. A sprain's a slight tear. I wouldn't be surprised if it was a tear. So they, I have a feeling Mr. Vanny and company are not being truthful with us media types. I mean, I think that they're being cagey for sure, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that certainly seems that they are, they don't want to just come out and say the whole thing. But I also think that this seems like an injury that should have healed faster than it did. And they've been working on it and there's been setbacks. And when you have setbacks, you sort of have to go back to almost not to square one, but at least reel back what you were doing. You can progress the player. He could be a slow healer. He could be a slow healer. He could absolutely. So, um, you know, it's something to sort of keep an eye on there. Um, Yeah, I mean, this is, you look at the status, and and so he talked about the guys coming back, and and I know we didn't really follow up on that, but with Sebastian Legette playing heavy minutes, and he certainly said that there were guys who played heavy minutes with uh, Sebastian Legette um, and Jonathan Dos Santos, so he was sort of, he seemed to be hedging that maybe they wouldn't play a part, but he wanted to talk to them and see if they wanted to play a part, right? And so there's a possibility that Sebastian Legette for sure could be available probably off the bench off the in bench. this game um, coming up on, on Wednesday. So keep that in mind. F. Ryan Alvarez should be 100% available because he didn't play too many minutes um, in that. So he will probably be available off the bench, I would imagine. Um, Do you think he'll start? No. I don't think so either. No. No, he hasn't been playing. So now you have to sort of get him yeah. back into a little bit of playing shape. Uh, he yeah. played a, he played a couple times earlier in the in the Gold Cup, but whenever it got into the pressure situations, uh, they really laid off on him. And you can understand he's a young player too, yeah. um, and so so that makes some sense to me. So anyway, um, that's sort of where it is as you go th- as you go forward, um, and so. Uh, I, I think looking at this RSL game, I think the Galaxy are going to be in better position than they have been, Larry, because even though Vasquez is probably not going to play, you're going to get Sebastian Legette back, who probably can play for you. I'm not saying start, but could play, right? And so you're going to be able to fill in. You're going to have Efrain Alvarez coming off the bench as well. And then pretty soon, um, you know, I thought it was going to be even better for the Galaxy, but with Jonathan Dos Santos in Mexico, because we were told, we thought that everybody was coming back to the Galaxy today. It looks like Jonathan is, is in Mexico City, so that's a, a, a delay, at least, of, I think, what we were thinking um, earlier today. Uh, I don't a, expect a him to bit. play Wednesday. Uh, no, I, I'm, I'm not thinking, because he would have to get on a plane, like, tomorrow, yeah. and then, you know, come up, and then, I mean, he could. He could absolutely be ready, but that's a guy who needs a little bit of time. Give him give him a, give yeah. him the, the midweek off. Even if he says yeah. he wants to play, maybe you give him the midweek off. So, um, yeah, it's, it's one of those. I want to give a, a shout-out to Ricardo. Uh, Ricardo said, gave us a $10 super chat and says, just wanted to say hi. I'm the guy from the live show with the flamingo shirt. Uh, Ricardo, you undersold that. That was a sexy, uh, flamingo shirt. It had LA galaxy and flamingos on it. It was sexy as all heck. So yes, sir. Thank you for the $10 super chat. And also congratulations on a sexy flamingo shirt. So yes, I, there was, would you wear a sexy flamingo shirt? 
dang snippy. I would I've worn my forward <laughs> forward Madison shirt up here, which has flamingos on two sides. Thank you very much. I love that. Right. That's a great shirt. I'm a flamingo fan. I like them. I don't think I would. I'm too old for that stuff. You could absolutely. I think we should get you a nice pink uh-huh. flamingo shirt, and you can wear it to a game. In fact, uh-huh. you know what? We'll crowdfund for that. We'll crowdfund. Oh, I'm, so, no. I'm sure somebody will want to super chat you uh, some oh, money gosh. for for a, for I thought a flamingo shirt. Up a can of worms with that. Oh yeah. my goodness. Or a can of flamingos, Larry. A can, that's right. can of, flamingos. of flamingos. That's right. Pink flamingos. Uh, um. So anyway, so that's where we sit from that i mean one of the other parts about this though um and i gotta try to find it i gotta dig through here a little bit um but what greg vanny was starting to say about how the group is progressing um and just like little things that they are doing and sort of the mindsets um that you have to have whenever you're trying to be better than what you are Right. And I think that's a that's sort of the way of saying it. And yeah. I have the he had quote. a rather good quote about that. Yeah, he did. And, the, and his quote was this. He says, we have to get out of the mindset of being good enough and get into the mindset of being great. And if that isn't a Ted Lasso thing, um, I don't know what I mean. You know, we talk and, and we shouldn't we shouldn't even uh, lower it to the level of Ted Lasso. And I mean that in, in a complimentary way. Right. Lasso sort of quirky. That's just one of those things that's like. I know it sounds sort of, again, a little cliche, right? But at the same time, you, you listen to that, Larry, and you say, listen, you guys have been in this survival mode in the LA Galaxy for for the last like three or four years where you're just trying to survive, right? And you need to stop surviving. You need to thrive, right? You need to go past that. And Greg Vanny's like, listen, I'm glad you guys are doing good. I'm glad we're in third place in the Western Conference. And he even talks about, you know, just sort of the position of the club and where it is. Um, but at the same time, he's like, but it's time that we move forward. Right. It's time that you stop trying to survive. It's time that you stop trying to be good enough. You need to be you need to figure out how to be great. And that's well, a different mindset than the galaxy have had in recent time. I mean, for obvious reasons, I've been interested in seeing what this team is capable of when Vanny has all his resources, when Chicharito is back uh, with Sebastian back, with Jonah back. Um, does this team have a chance to be great if he gets all those? His disposal? Yes. Yes. But. When will that happen? That's that's the question. It depends on how long Chicharito is out. But yeah. when he comes back, again, I believe they have a chance to do something special. I mean, it seems that way, though. Um, it seems like the LA Galaxy and Greg Vanny, it seems like there is going to be this... He knows, and, and again, another thing he said, he said that they haven't even scratched the surface of how good he thinks this team could be. He says, he says, this is great. I'm glad. He goes, he, what, Larry? He said they're ahead of schedule, right? Because wasn't that your question? Didn't yes. you, didn't yes. you ask I asked him, question? I asked him to assess the team's progress to this point. Are they about where he expected them to be or perhaps a little bit behind? And, and then he, he alluded to the preseason goal the team set prior to the opener against Miami where they set a team point goal and they're like, what was a one point away from there or three points with a, with a game left until the, the halfway point of the season. And he said, boy, that's ambitious. And Jonathan Bond said the same thing. He said, that's ambitious for a brand new team. Um, yeah, I think, I think they're, they're a little bit ahead of uh, where he thought they'd be considering all the injuries and absences they've had this season. Yeah. It feels which shows you what difference this guy has made on this team. Yeah, um, here, I have Greg talking about that. So this is after your question. So let's listen to Greg Vanny here. Well, uh, I think we are ahead of where I thought we were going to be in terms of standings and points and things like that. Um, you know, our, our guys, we did some goal setting at the beginning of the year, and I'll tell you, we're three points away f- with one game from the point total that they wanted to have at the middle of the season. And when they set that, I was like, that's ambitious, right? This is a group that's still... Uh, that's still coming together. And at the time, I didn't even know the name of some of the players and that were going to be here. And so um, I'll tell you that, like I said, if they're three points away from matching the, the goal that they wanted to have at at, uh, at midseason. So um, I'm pleased with it. In terms of uh, where are we, you know, collectively, I, I still, as I said before, I think we're still scratching the surface of what our performance level can be and what our overall uh, what over our overall level as a group can be and our depth and how we can, and it can work through our, through the game with, you know, bringing more guys on as we again, get whole, we're going to be starting to bring guys on off the bench who are for sure starters, uh, capable of being starters. And so um, I, I'm excited. I think again, we've done some grinding through the first half of the season for sure. The character of this group is really um, has shown through 
Uh, the next half of the season needs to be a little bit more about, again, the quality and the connection of, of our performances for 90 minutes instead of little stretches. It's, it's going to be about, uh, that side of things. We've tried to stay focused on the performance and not just the results in the, be in the beginning, but I think we have a real opportunity and a real, um, exciting, I think, level that we can get to if, if we can keep moving forward here over the next, uh, the next half of the season, if you will. I was going to say, then you go on to ask him about Ted Lasso, um, which which is always an he important finally thing. Finally, start to watch that series. Yeah, he he said he's going to. He gave us a deadline. He said he's going to watch the entire thing by the end of August. Of August. Okay, he's so the first two episodes of season two and likes it. He thinks there is quote unquote clever writing. Unquote. Yes. Mm -hmm. which is good to hear. Jonathan Bond isn't that big a fan of the show, though he's watched the first two episodes of season one. He doesn't want to be reminded about being back in England. <laughs> yeah, he, he's focused on standing out in L.A. right now. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, it's it's absolutely one of those things uh, to, to look at. So, um, by the way, Ben says Josh prefer, prefers the Miami crest to the galaxy. Uh, no, because those are herons, not flamingos. Thank you uh -huh. very much. Big Thank fan you. of flamingos. Eh, herons are nice, but they're 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 not there for me, Larry. I don't need I don't need the herons. Um, How about cranes? You like cranes? <laughs> uh, yeah, I like cranes. Okay. Uh, I like I like big cranes and small cranes and building cranes and bird cranes. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a big fan of cranes. You think? Yeah, I'm glad I'm glad we had a, this podcast tonight so everybody could learn that about me. It's a really important thing for for people to understand. Let's get to uh, some of the other stuff that I wanted to get to on this particular one. <laughs> Where is this show going? I'm telling you, this is what happens. The when tangents you, in this show are unbelievable. Sometimes this is what happens when you do when too many. Too many shows in a week, Larry. Okay, <laughs> I've done too That's many right. shows. I, I told somebody recently. I think there's an article coming out tomorrow. But I told somebody recently uh, that I would gladly do a show every single night if I could, five days a week. I would do it all. And I, I don't. I don't think my brain can handle that. Let's no. be very clear. I don't think you, anybody wants to listen to that too. Um, so absolutely. By the way, but Patrick. If anybody could do that, Josh. You could. I mean, you're such a workaholic. It's unbelievable. Yeah. By the way, Patrick uh, called out uh, Vanny perfectly. He said uh, he committed to watching it so people would stop asking asking him about it. So, and Larry, you and I talked about that. I said he finally said, "I'll do it by the end of August." So that way, we and would then not we talk about. Yeah. So that way, we he, we wouldn't ask him until the end of yeah. August. Although I'm sure if there's a good point in there somewhere where he's in a good mood, somebody might say. Getting closer to the end of August, getting ready to talk about Ted Lasso. So we'll we'll drop that in there with Greg. The, there's I think he'd respond to if, if maybe Nikki asked him that. So, but the rest of us, no, he wouldn't respond. Uh, he would he would let you he would let you ask, and he would I think yeah, he would let so. me. Greg likes. Listen, we are blessed by a manager right now who is uh, who likes to talk about soccer and who likes to talk, and so that's yes. good um, because I've seen his quotes. They're they're very long and, and all sorts of things. I thought it was funny. Yeah. There's another part of this too. Um, there's a uh, uh, Jonathan Bond got talked a little bit today, um, and uh, we talked about the locker room and the whole deal. So let me play a little bit of Jonathan Bond as well uh, before we get too far into this and get ready to talk about Real Salt Lake here and standings and all that sort of fun stuff as well. Here we go. Yeah, we have. We've got a very close bond. Um, like I've said before, there are no egos in the changing room. Um, it's one of the best changing rooms or the locker rooms that um, that I've been in for sure. So. Everyone's very close, um, and yeah, we had we had a, a difficult week away. Um, you know, two games at altitude, and then a third game in a week at Dallas, which was like playing in an oven. Um, <laughs> so it was it was difficult. Um, always things to improve for sure because the games didn't go how we wanted them to. And then you know, off the back of that week and those three games to then start the the Portland game like we did, which was difficult. And we just we we hung in there. Um, we we managed to get two goals and then kind of reset at half time and and took the game away from them. And that that's just an example of the character I think that um, and the resilience that we've shown all season. We've come from behind several times. Um, we've got results sometimes when we've been backs against the wall early in the season. And you were playing with new players, especially you know in the first ten games of the season to pick up as many results as we did with. With uh, with the group that we had and, and new guys coming into a new league and stuff, it uh, I think anyway it shows good character. All right, there's a little bit, and I want to get to this because this is about setting that goal. Whenever Greg Vanny says they set a points goal, and 
if you if you do the math on this, right, they set a point school of 31 points, Larry. 31 points. 31 because they said they're three points with one game, right? And the, right. The, the, this game against RSL is the halfway point, 17 games down, 17 games to go after yep. this game is over. So they set it for 31 points, which means it's they're looking at 62 points, Larry, as their goal for the entire year. When was the last time they had at least 60 points in a regular season? I have no idea. It's yeah. been a while. It's been a long time. I wanted to look at where 62 points would have put yeah. them. Like, I like will assemble in, our COG staff and find that out. I was going to say, I, I, we talked a little bit about it. I said, where would 62 points have t- put them in 2019? And it would have put them in second place in the Western Conference. Um, I think uh, 10 points south of LAFC, who had 72 points that year. But it would have put them above the Seattle Sounders in second place yeah. in the Western Conference. It would have put them in second place um, or close to first place, I think, in the Eastern Conference in 2019. That's a huge. I mean, the <laughs> Greg Vanny goes. I thought it was ambitious. J- Jonathan Bond also <laughs> thought it was ambitious. Here's what he said whenever the, I talked about that goal and asked him about, uh, you know, the points. Yeah, I mean, in terms of the goal that we set, uh, that's true. Before the night before the Miami game, uh, when we set it, I mean, I was kind of thinking, like that's that's a, a big goal for a, a brand new team, um, and to think that we're one win away from that is. Um, encouraging but yeah I think he's right you know we haven't scratched the surface you know with the ball we kind of play how he wants to play in patches of games I feel Um, we never we never do it for like a whole 90 minutes and then defensively we're we're conceding too many at the moment for a variety of different reasons so um, you know we even just tighten up defensively you know a little bit and we get a bit more rhythm with the ball and not giving it away so much, then, you know, our potential is huge, I think. All right, there we go. A little Jonathan Bond uh, talking you know, there as well. I was going to uh, say about, about yep. when Jonathan talks about allowing too too many goals. Outside of Viafani and Araujo have been like standards on the, on the left and right out, outside. Think of all the changes that have been in the middle of that back line. Yeah, I it's mean, been a lot. Sega's been out. Williams has been out. Steris has been out. Yep. Depuy has been out. I mean, just, of course it's going to be difficult. Depew, Larry, Depew. Remember, his, Depew, name, his name is Depew. I, sorry. I, I, it's one of my, you know how I have like a pet I peeve of people part, who... I apologize. No, no, my pet peeve, my biggest pet peeve, somebody asked me what my biggest pet peeve was, uh, and I said it's resign and resign. That's right. Big right. difference in those. Big difference, and you have to get those right. That's a pet and peeve. And you have to one. get a hyphen in there for yes. resign. For resign is a hyphen. Resign is just one word. Okay. Correct. So that's it. So resign. My second biggest pet peeve is Nick saying Nick Depew's name wrong. Depew. So, yeah. Yeah, Depew. That's right. I uh, apologize. It is funny, though. We were uh, When we, you and I were sitting in the press box on Friday night, and Ravellison scored, and Mike Rajo was doing his... Uh, his scoring uh, chant there, and it was like uh, Ryan, and I'm like I'm waiting to hear like how people said his name, and it was like Rrr, Rrr, Rrr. you know it was all jumbled together because people were trying to put it together. I always enjoy that, so that let's was just good. call him Double R. Yeah. Yep. 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 Absolutely. Um. So there we go. Uh. That's that's the media call there. I wanted to get to um just a couple things that maybe I th- thought was interesting here, Larry. Um. One of the things is the DP minutes, the total available minutes of vi- for designated players. Right now, designated players have played sixty one point seven percent of their total available minutes. Um. <laughs> for Chicharito, that he's played sixty percent of the total available minutes. Jonathan Dos Santos has played less than 45% of the total minutes, and Kevin Cabral has played 86.6% of his total minutes. That's an important number to watch, just because the lower that gets, the less impact your designated players have on the game, um, and that can be a problem as we go on, and we've seen that be a problem for the LA Galaxy. I wonder what the value is of that per minute for these DPs. Oh, I have a chart With that their actually, contract, yeah. I actually, I actually have a chart that does that. I haven't filled it out in a while because I was yeah. waiting for, for a contract. That'd be interesting. That'd be really interesting. I have it. I'll, I'll get it done for next okay. show for sure. Okay. Um, if we're looking at this, this is a, a, a chart I haven't brought out for a while and it's basically, I call it the percent record table, right? And it's, uh, how, what percentage of the games do the LA Galaxy win? What percentage of the games do the LA Galaxy lose? And then my favorite number, which I think is a really important number, is what percentage of the time do the LA Galaxy get a point in a game? Right, a point or better. So that's getting a result, right? If you draw or you win, that is. The, if you combine those two, that is a different number than if you just win or lose, right? And so you can see, like in some of the good years, like in 2010, uh, you go over here and their point, you know, the the percentage of times that they got at least a point in the game 
was 76.7%. That's so pretty th- impressive. So three quarters of the times they went into a game, Larry, they ended up with at least a point. In well, 20, 2011. I was going to say 2011 is 85.3% of the That's time. That's really impressive. They got, I mean, you're talking about some of the best years uh, for the LA Galaxy too. In 2011, um, you know, uh, 2012 isn't as high as you'd expect it to be at 64.7. 2013 is 67. 2017, look at that one. 2017, 47 point something percent. <laughs> I mean, that, that's where you're at. But in 2021, they've only draw, they've only drawn one game, so it only boosts their win percentage, which which right now is 56.3 percent of the time they win games, 37.5 percent of the time they've lost games, and that means that 62.5 percent of the time they've gotten a point or better. You want to see that stat. As the Galaxy get better, you want to see that point percentage creep up. So when the Galaxy aren't playing well, Larry, you want to see them get a point out of a game. And this indicates whether or not they're doing that when they play bad. If you play bad, you don't want to lose a game. You just want to get a point. Yep. Right? Does, does that make sense? Yep. Yep. Sort of. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, kind of. A little bit. I know. It's it's not it's not that important. Uh, home points right now, the LA Galaxy are, are averaging above uh, what they have in home points. 2.25 points per game at home. Uh, it looks like uh, a keyboard. Yeah, it does a little bit. Uh, yeah, let's nice see. Uh, home points right now through 2020, they had 13 home points. They have 18 home points uh, right now uh, all the way through um, the 16 games in 2021. And remember that that was through 22 games um, in the uh, in uh, 2020. What year is it? 2021? So 2020 was, the, was, was 22 games because of the pandemic. Um, in there, uh, away points right now, the LA Galaxy are more, they're just, I, I, it's, it's one of those, um, it's one of those things where they're right about average. So the average is 1.19 points per game on the road. Right now they're at 1.25. That got hammered a little bit whenever they uh, went ahead and uh, and lost and didn't win all those games on the road. They had those three games. Uh, the other one I want to get to before we get out of here too fast um, is that through 16 games, the LA Galaxy, I think, have one, are tied for the fifth best start in franchise history um, through these 16 games. Here's the thing, though, Larry. In 2019... They were also 28 points in 16 games. Okay, 2019. Okay, so this team has not outpaced 2019. And you remember what 2019 was? Basically, they got in the playoffs, but they were low in the the first round. But they were lower in the table. They had to go play at Minnesota. They won that game. Um, I want to show you what the table, sort of the table positioning looks like. Basically, where is the LA Galaxy's position on the table throughout this year so far? And then I'm going to show you what it looked like in 2019. So that way you can sort of compare, and I will describe it for people who are listening on the podcast as well, is basically the LA Galaxy have been very consistent this year. In the Western Conference, they've basically been right around third place. Their highest at one point was first place. That was after the second game. Uh, They've been in second place once, but basically it's been third, except for a little drop down to fourth and all the way through. Okay, Uh, For the Supporter Shield, it's basically the same. They've been in fourth. They jumped up to third. Uh, they've been as low as uh, five, I think, five or six, and then basically stayed at that fourth. Okay. If you go and compare that to what you see in 2019, you're going to see something very similar through the front, front two thirds of the season, um, which is an LA Galaxy team that was very well positioned to be in second place in the Western Conference and second place in the Supporters Shield at one time um, and sort of hovering around in there. And then as it got into games, you know, 22, 23, 24, as it got into the latter half, that, ba- that back end of the third, that 2019 get team started slipping. Uh, they started having some runs where they weren't winning games, and that brought them down. That game, that team barely made the playoffs. So, as much work as the LA Galaxy have done so far, Larry, they are far from finished. It's good. This team is better in terms of the teamwork and the chemistry than 2019. I'll tell you that right now. I see it immediately. They're playing, I think, more attractive soccer. Certainly, whenever you look at 2019, it was it was a pretty easy game plan as well. Get the ball to Zlatan and let him score. Um, you know, this is this Which is, is more complicated. Plan. It's a great plan if you have Zlatan, right? right. If you don't have Zlatan, it's not a no, great plan. No. Um, so, you know, looking at all those different things. So just keep that in mind. Um, hey, Josh. As, uh, yeah. My uh, question with all those graphs, yeah, where do you find the time to do all this stuff? I just I just put it in Larry once, and then I just have to update it. It's not like it's hard. You know, it's hard building charts. It's not hard updating charts. Okay. Um, so, you know, it's not like I spend a ton of time. Just like, you know, three or four hours a day. It's fine. Um, I'm sure everybody has that extra time bandwidth round, you know, <laughs> that's just laying around. Um, if we get to the standings now, uh, the LA galaxy, uh, looking pretty good actually overall, the Eastern conference has new England, Bruce arena, five away wins, Larry. They have six wins at home. New England does. They have five away. They're five, two and three away. Nice. What is Bruce doing? 
You know, people said Working he was done. Working his magic as always. People you, said you he can was never done. Never discount that team when it's coached by Bruce Arena. You can never discount him at all. Never ignore him. People he just, said I don't know how he does it. He was done, Larry. They yeah. said he was done. He was never coming back. He was he couldn't coach anymore because he was MLS 2.0 and didn't know what he was doing. And he has New England with 11 wins already, six at home, five away. That's ridiculous. They're at 36 points right now, by the way. I think they're in a weaker Eastern Conference, and MLS can fight me if they want to about that. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that's where we sit. Uh, if you look at the Western Conference, it's Seattle at 32, Sporting Kansas City at 30, the LA Galaxy just two points behind Sporting Kansas City right now at 28. Um, there's a run of home games coming up. This is where the LA Galaxy need to sort of make that stand. If you're going to be a good team, you win your home games, all right? I, can, I have a lot of forgiveness for away losses. Um, and... It's, uh, it's, you can't, there is no forgiveness in losing at home. You can draw at home to a really good team. That's okay. But you can't lose games at home anymore. And the LA Galaxy need to tighten that up a little bit. If I think they want to be as dominant in the Western Conference as, uh, as they sort of think. So, hey, Josh, um, uh, yes. remember what Jonathan Bond said about the Western Conference in the media call today? He, tell, he, he tell. was very impressed with the depth of good teams in that conference. He said, he said, even Vancouver and Dallas have gotten, results away and uh which shows a lot about just how strong that conference is and i and i agree with them it's a very very strong conference yeah it seems that way patrick in the in the chat room uh says uh teams underestimate the revs because they're the revs you know that's that sort of falls along one of the things that i don't like which is like everybody says oh well the la galaxy always get the best game from everybody that's to pump up your own egos Okay, the LA Galaxy used to be that whenever they were a very good team. They have been a very mediocre team for four or five years now. So you're not always getting the best games. Now, certainly people are paying attention because the Galaxy have won games people I think didn't expect them to win. Um, or at least they thought they were worse than they are. I don't think the Galaxy have shocked anybody in any of their wins yet. Um, you know, you beating a Seattle, beating a Sporting Kansas City, that would be the one of those, oh, oh, okay, the Galaxy are, are, are here, to, here to shock people. Um, and we haven't seen that really yet. Um, so for me, um, I'm sort of in the, I think teams are taking the LA galaxy serious, but they're not at the point where they used to be where, you know, teams would come on, uh, come into, you know, or, or, or the LA galaxy would go somewhere against the road to like New York or something like that and get the best game out of those guys anymore. I'm just waiting for the time when Van has all the ammunition at his disposal, all the players available to him and just really see what this team can do. I mean, I really think it'll be special. Yeah, um, but I don't think that's going to happen for a little while. It depends, of course, on Chicharito's availability. But I really want to see what this team can do when all the pieces are there. Yeah, it seems. I'm that very way. optimistic about this team. Let's get uh, let's get a, a, D, a Dijon y- a Jovalich. I don't. I'm sure we're all saying right, his very first good. name I wrong. That's, I think that's close very enough close to what it uh, should be. Yes, uh, Dijon Jovalich uh, was apparently supposed to be in Los Angeles today. Uh, Fabrizio Romano. Hold on, you got to do the you got to do the hand. Fabrizio, 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 Fabrizio. Fabrizio. Uh, Fabrizio Romano tweeted it out this morning. I was able to verify that as well. So uh, we were expecting that uh, Jovalich was in LA today. It was to sign paperwork. It was to get it done. I wouldn't be surprised if there is an announcement later this week. Maybe Thursday sounds like a good day if you're if you want to sort of look at that. Um, but we expect that this deal is done now. Um, do you I don't speak Serbian. I do not. Uh, but I, I heard he speaks either. English, so good, I th- good. yes, I, th- I think we'll be okay. Uh, you okay. and I. Otherwise, we're gonna have to learn some stuff. Um, yeah, Jovalich seems like a really interesting kid. I think they're really excited about him. Um, just all the people I've talked to in the front office just seem like they're pumped, um, sort of, you know, really getting there. So, uh, we'll see, uh, eventually how that all plays out. But, uh, I love ex- the fact he's only like 21 or 22 years old too. I think a that's U, great. A U 22 signing, a, yeah. a good deal. It's a really good deal for the LA yeah. galaxy to, to, to make this play on this. Um, and listen to our live show. There was some, some, I think some intricate discussion on it uh, with Dennis DeClosa as well. So, um, and he would, as we said, he would not confirm. Uh, he did not deny. Uh, he said he wouldn't announce a player before they were done signing. So uh, you could read that. between the lines, you know, what's that's going right. On. Um, I would expect that there are all-star announcements. I think this week as well about who's going to be on the all-star team. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if the LA Galaxy only have maybe one or two players picked on that. I know at one point we were sort of like, oh, there's going to be so many, um, but. I think right now um, that it very well uh, it, that you're that you're probably looking at you know Chicharito was a lock and we, it was always going to be a lock. So um, outside of that, we talked about who might be the team MVP 
Larry, uh, at our live show. And so is it somebody like Jonathan Bond who might be an all-star? Is it somebody like Julian Araujo who might be an all-star? I think Julian Araujo could be one of those guys. So um, I'm not now, expecting a whole bunch who, of Galaxy players. Who did our live audience like as the team MVP right now? Was, was that Jonathan Bond? I think no, it was no, Bond. No, it wasn't. No? No, it was it was, it was a Rajo. It was a Rajo. Well, was oh, a Rajo. Okay, well okay. Galaxy Survivor was a Rajo, but I think okay. Jonathan Bond was MVP right now. I think you're I think, right. I think you're right. Yeah, I think. I, but yeah, but it I switched. So. I want to know why Galaxy Survivor Julian Araujo wins, but but Jonathan Bond. Remember, I remember we said we disagree. Um, it was one of those things that we we talked about a little bit. But anyway, no. Um, I thought that was interesting. Uh, just how that goes. So I would expect that. I. D- this is. I'm. Let me preface. It's not signing news. I wouldn't be surprised if there's an interesting announcement tomorrow. It's not signing news. has nothing to do with with a player coming into the team. Just pay attention tomorrow. That's all. I can't. That's it. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, I, I know. these mysteries. Ooh. I know. I, I'll tell you later, Larry. I'll tell. Okay. I haven't. I haven't told you, but I will tell you. Um, but, okay. But it's interesting tomorrow. So pay attention um, to what's going on with the Galaxy. Does this tomorrow. have anything to do with, with the front office? But why? Why would you? Why, I can't tell you. Okay. Okay. So right. so I'm don't okay. ask me questions. All right. Okay. Okay. I will okay. say in a way, and it's going to be quite a, I think it's a funny joke whenever this comes out about whenever okay. I say it in a way it does have to do with the front okay. office. Okay. okay. All right. Okay. Uh, that's, that's, but you're not joining the galaxy. I, well, they asked, I said no. Okay. Um, so yeah, so that's, that's where there. Um, that's the all-star announcement coming out. Um, that should be this week, I think. So pay attention to that. I think we'll probably talk about that on the show Thursday. That sounds like a good time. Um, so yeah, so that's, that's sort of stuff that's, that's out there. Uh, Kevin, Kevin has a whole bunch of stuff that he's been working on even in Tokyo. So pay attention to Kevin as well. And he'll help you out with all that, um, and, and sort of uh, get you through that. So, um, yeah, that's where we sit in terms of transfers. That's where we sit in terms of all that stuff. And I know we're running long again. What else is new? I'm, 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 late. Right. I'm running long, you know, the whole deal. I would like to point out, by the way, our live show was one minute or one hour at one minute, that would have been cute. One hour and twenty nine minutes and like forty seven seconds, and I said it was going to be a ninety minute show. I thought nice. that I thought that's pretty good for for. And you did it. that on purpose, didn't you? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, let's see. Some people are saying, uh, Mr. Provino says uh, that the big announcement they're going to have tomorrow is they're going to give a new pronunciation for Robellison. <laughs> that's great. Double R. That's, I'm telling that's... you, double R makes it nice and simple. Yeah, Patrick says Josh is joining the Galaxy ownership group. If they'll take twenty dollars, I will. I will. I will join, but um, I don't think you're going to take my twenty dollars. So uh, I don't think that's going to happen. Um, let's see. Anything else before we get to schedule? Real quick, we've talked about it a whole bunch. There are four home games out of six coming up here in August. Uh, this is the home stretch for the LA Galaxy. This is where they need to make that move to sort of solidify themselves, not only up the Western Conference, Larry, but solidify themselves within a a group that includes Seattle and Sporting Kansas City, right? There needs to be a little bit of a breakaway. Um, And I think that when Seattle and Sporting Kansas City get some guys back and get healthy and that type of thing, those are going to be the two best teams in the Western Conference. And if the LA Galaxy want to chase them, then they need to make their move now. Yeah, Um, I think the Galaxy have a good shot Wednesday. Real Salt Lake, I believe, is 2-2-2 and in a road. And they haven't won for about a month. So I think the Galaxy have a good shot on Wednesday night. They did... um, they're actually undefeated in their last three games, right? Because they beat right. Colorado at home three to nothing, um, which I thought was a good win for them. Yes. Um, they're coming off a zero zero draw with Real Salt Lake. This is a seven thirty p.m. time uh, game time. Kickoff is seven thirty eight p.m. Games on Spectrum Sports now. I believe it's a Spectrum game. Uh, so Nikki and I believe Kobe might be back because Kobe wasn't there last time. And uh, Joe Tutino is Rafa Garcia, which by the way. Rafa Garcia did an excellent job next to Joe Tatino. I know you didn't get to see it, Larry. I'll tell. No. Rafa Garcia did an excellent job. I think Rafa should be in there more often. I really enjoyed him. So Rafa Garcia was excellent. Rafa, right. I, I enjoyed it immensely. So please keep up with that. Um, but I think that Kobe Jones should be back. Gold Cup's over, so he should be there unless he's doing some Olympic stuff. And I think he, maybe the Olympics might be an, over enough. Anyway, we'll see. 7.38 p.m. kickoff time. Spectrum Sportsnet. Uh, Justin Glad got a red card in their last game. A uh, second yellow for a play off the ball. So he's not going to be available for that. Uh, this is the same RSL team that got out to a quick start against the LA Galaxy. The Galaxy were able to chip away in Salt Lake and get that 2-2 draw, which was a really good point for them because when you look at their uh, month of uh, July sort of standings there, they ended up with averaging 1.17 points per game through the six games um, that they got. So not a yep, ton and, of points. And they got that draw by a goal from double R in the 7th, 7th minute. That's right. That's high. 
Yeah, absolutely. And so, um, you know, this is going to be, I think it's going to be a very tough game uh, for the LA Galaxy just because I think RSL uh, does a good job. I think Bobby Wood has been playing more up top, so that's going to be a little bit different dimension. I know he came into the game, I think, uh, in that first game the Galaxy played against RSL. So that's something to watch there. Albert Rusnak, we talked about. Um, you know, I think Herrera and Chang had actually pretty good games against the Galaxy. Miram was good. Krylak was good. Um, they have Zach McMath back there, but I think... Um, Let's see. Is is uh, David Ochoa? Is he going to be back in that? Because he, there, there was a big Cry- announcement today on him. Um, I know Krylak is their leading scorer with seven goals. So yep, yep. So uh, again, I, I think this is a good game for the other Galaxy. We talk about games the Galaxy should win. Larry, this is a game the Galaxy Galaxy should win. Uh, RSL's a bit of an, an unorganized mess at the uh, uh, in some stretches, right? We talk about being consistent over ninety minutes. I don't think RSL is consistent over ninety minutes. I think that they turn the ball over, but they're definitely dangerous, right? So you have to be careful whenever you look at them. Um, if you look at the match details here, uh, and I never trust these numbers from Major League Soccer. <laughs> they're usually wrong. Um, 16, How bad is that website at MLS? Uh, How bad is I mean, oh you my know, God. if they... The fact that they use a single initial and a last name is probably the thing that'll drive me crazy. Uh, that'll be the thing that finally, because I'm always clicking. I'm like, I don't know this guy's first name, and then I have to click on it. Then it has to take me to a different web page, and I have to wait for it to pop up, and then I have to go back to the web page so I can go back. It's just, it's a nightmare. Anyway, uh, the last three games that these uh, teams have played, it was the LA Galaxy winning at home 2-1 to one back in uh, uh, November of 2020. Uh, the LA Galaxy lost in, uh, in uh, let's see, that September, yeah, that's that. That's that month. September twenty third, uh, they lost two to nothing at Salt Lake, and then it was a two two draw the last time they played this year uh, on July twenty first. Um, and so, really, it looks like the LA Galaxy trying to come in and be a team uh, that defends their home turf against RSL. The 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 at least the previous games sort of plan that out, Larry. That there's going to be uh, a chance for them to win this game. So um, we don't expect Chicharito. Uh, we don't expect Victor Vasquez. I think Jonathan Dos Santos being available is probably going to be a no. Um, so those are your three that you're missing. If Annie said everybody else should be available, that includes Efrain Alvarez. I would imagine Sebastian Leggett is available, even if he's on the bench um, and he doesn't play. Um, but I think that maybe in an emergency situation or to get him like 30 minutes back with the LA Galaxy, you know, at, sort of at the end, if he's feeling up to it, I think um, I think that Greg will have no problems uh, putting him in for that. So hopefully he's not needed. Hopefully the the for the LA Galaxy, they do the thing that they need to do during this home stretch layer, which is score goals, score goals early, and then put games away so that way they don't have to put in a whole ton of effort because with six games plus an all-star game, including, including an El Trafico within this month, um, they have a packed schedule. Uh, and it's only going to get hotter uh, here in Southern California. It is actually, this is actually when we start to get hot, is into August and September. Um, and we've sort of seen some of that today. I know it's been a little bit of a heat wave today. So uh, that's where we sit. Anything else you want to talk about for... Uh for, uh, no, just for one RSL last game? thought on your uh, on your live show at Taps. Uh, it was a pleasure being out there. And congratulate you and Eric for hosting a great show. Everybody had a great time. It was and it was well worth it being down there. It was a blast. And thank so you much, for inviting me there. So much fun, Larry. You were excellent. You were you were one of my favorite parts of that whole thing. I I laughed. I cried a little bit. You know, I liked the I, trivia. The trivia was cool. I yelled and screamed a little bit too. And you know, it was it was a whole bunch. There of There he is. There's the so, little one. So yeah, Jake was there with me for a little bit. We got to meet Cosmo. Cosmo was there. Kevin Hartman was there. Dennis Close. Right. It was a lot of fun. So uh, we had a great time, and and hopefully everybody who was there had a great time. And people have already asked when we're doing our next one. So I guess that means that I got to start planning that again. So I'm sure uh, Taps would love to have you back. Well, I you know I do want to spread it around. I do want to go up to like either the South Bay or into the Carson area, maybe at a brewery and get a little closer to the stadium so I can attract people who maybe didn't want to drive all the way down Orange County. How about maybe Paso Robles? Yeah, but Paso Robles. I love Paso <laughs> Robles. I'll go there. I don't think anybody's following me, but may, hey, you know what? If it's a live show with me and wine, I'll be happy with that. I'm, I don't, I don't, I don't I don't need it. Uh, people kept asking me if I was going to videotape the live show as well. And I was like, you know, I need a camera crew to actually do that like correctly. I thought about doing GoPros and I think I have an idea for next time. So if I do it next time, maybe I'll, I'll figure out a way to video the whole thing as well. Just have a um, wide angle fisheye lens or something. Yeah, that's what we, because that always makes me look flattering. I'm already round yeah. in the midsection and then the fisheye it makes, makes us it look, look more round. So, so it no, makes us only look, if you're out at the edges and then it makes you look curved. True. Right? So true. They, yeah, anyway, that's where we're at. Uh, by the way, You're Patrick. Patrick gave us a $5 super chat and says COG can buy 0.00001% of the galaxy with this. He goes corporate takeover seed money. There you go. So like $5. It. We're, we're in. 
we're in. Uncle Phil's going to let us buy in with five bucks. We're like at the cheap poker table. And, and it, you can't say Vegas. Nobody could buy in for a $5 poker table. But in Laughlin, maybe, you could buy a $5 poker table. You could buy in with $5. So uh, we'll see how we uh, we do the next one. So, yeah, that's it. Uh, I had a ton of fun um, at the live show. Uh, this is a really busy week for the Galaxy, Wednesday and then Sunday. Um, so I, I think their games the Galaxy can win, getting some people healthy, all the things seem to be in a positive sort of mindset. I think Greg and the team seem to be in a positive mindset, too. So uh, for me, it's a six-point week for the LA Galaxy. Uh, they're playing two games at home. Got to be six. So uh, yeah. anything else, Larry? Predictions for RSL? No, sir. Uh, predictions, I, I see the Galaxy winning three to one over three RSL. Three to one. Three yeah. to one. Who scores the first goal for the LA Galaxy? Ooh. Uh, Samuel Gransor. Ooh, Sam. All right. So Sam gets goal. Uh, I like that. I think uh, Kevin Cabral is going to have a multi-goal game. I'm calling it. He's going to score two goals. Uh, I like your 3-1 prediction. He's due. He's due. You know he gets close. You know he gets close. We've seen it many times. Cabral, this is his breakout game. He's got the confidence now. It's time. Um, and he's going to start putting some some chances away. So we'll see how that goes. All right. Again, LA Galaxy face off against Real Salt Lake coming up 7.30 p.m. Wednesday, August 4th. Kickoff is 7.38 p.m. People will ask me on Twitter anyway, but I'll tell you right now. 7.38 p.m. is when the kickoff is. Uh, Larry and I will both be there, and uh, hopefully we can, uh, we can have fun uh, seeing everybody at halftime if you guys want to catch up. All right. And I'll comment on the anthem. Yeah, of course you will. You always do. All right. If you're looking for Mr. Larry Morgan on Twitter, he's not there. So stop looking. Uh, he stalks it. He's just not on it. Uh, if you're looking for him, though, you can find him at cornerthegalaxy.com. He has an article that I'll try to publish tonight or tomorrow morning. So that way you can get ready for the RSL game coming up on Wednesday. He did, he did a good coverage of the LA Galaxy's media call today. So lots of good information you're going to want to catch on that. Uh, if you're looking for me on Twitter, it's at Jay Guessman, J-G-U-E-S-M-A-N, and of course, at Galaxy Podcast. Head on over to cornerthegalaxy.com. Uh, where you can find all of our videos. We have the full media call there as well. So you have the full media call. You have Larry's article. You have podcasts. You have the live show. You have a whole bunch of fun stuff. It's right there for you. All right. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in on Monday night. For Larry Morgan, not on Twitter, I'm Josh Pato Guessman. You've been listening to Corner of the Galaxy from the box on cornerofthegalaxy.com. Have a great one, everybody. You've been listening to the Corner of the Galaxy podcast on cornerofthegalaxy.com. You can follow the show on Twitter and Instagram at Galaxy Podcast. And be sure to check out and subscribe to iTunes, Stitcher, and Facebook by searching for Corner of the Galaxy. Fans, we thank you for listening, and we ask that you be kind and courteous to your neighbors as you leave the podcast. We thank you for joining us and look forward to seeing you again. Until then, I'm Michael Araujo, and on behalf of the entire Corner of the Galaxy crew, goodbye, everybody.